Yep, that's fun. <laughs> Oh, hi guys, <laughs> didn't notice you here. Welcome to the next episode. So as you may remember from the last episode, or if you haven't seen it, you've probably seen the intro now, so you know what we've done in the last episode. We made the front end of the wiring harness work, kind of work, like it's uh, working. However, we have some issues and we diagnosed them and we know exactly what we need to do about that. I mean, we had issues with both flushers for the hazard and for the regular signal. So I ordered new ones, electronic ones, and they are here. We're going to replace them eventually. And we know that we need another switch for the hazards, which turns out to be a challenge because apparently a new switch costs 162 American dollars. I don't understand what's so complicated about this switch, but we will see. So that's the switch for 69 to 71 harnesses. Only for one year, Triumph used another switch, which is 1972. The switch looks the same in the front, but it has more terminals in the back because they changed the whole entire wiring diagram. And after that, in 73, they introduced the pull-out one. Then it has the light inside and all that. So only for 72 they use this different switch, which is 60 something dollars, if I remember correctly, a little bit cheaper, still super expensive, but at least a little bit cheaper. So I have to look at the diagram and see if I can make one from the 72 work for 70, because all I need is two independent switches. When, when one is closed, the other one to be open. And when this one is closed, the other one needs to be open. So that's all I need to make it work. But uh, I will see. So I don't think in this episode we're going to deal with any electrical components because I have to discuss things with John. I haven't discussed that yet. And um, like I said, I have to figure out what we're going to do with the switch. Maybe I can try and fix this. I don't know. But I'm kind of, as you can see, I'm kind of working on another car, but I need something there, so I'm stuck until tomorrow. So I came back to this car, and I want to do some quick job that's going to take me today and maybe tomorrow morning. And uh, this way I can also post a video because I'm not filming that other TR6 that I'm working on. So... What I think we can do, we can deal with the master cylinders. I was just looking around to see what we can do quickly. The master cylinders need to be installed, but John bought rebuilding kits for them. And it makes sense. He said, before we put them on, let's rebuild them so we don't have troubles with them in the future. So, yep, that's a good point. So, without further ado, let's dig them out and get crack -a -lock. So here's our brake master, it's still installed on the brake booster, which was painted, so <laughs> who knows how long ago that was. Let's un unwrap it. All right, that actually took <laughs> a lot of time to remove the masking tape because it sat there for four or five years, I believe, <laughs> whatever. So. Let's take it apart. Let's take it off of the booster. And I don't know why here there are so many bolts or nuts actually, but let's take them off. Is that metric? Huh. Huh. It's not 11 sixteenths, but it's not 5 eighths either. That's 17 mil which is also loose. What size is that? It's weird. So I rebuilt a master cylinder, brake master cylinder, maybe a year ago. I didn't film it though. I was doing something else on that car and I wasn't filming it. And it turned out that I had to rebuild the master cylinder. So I didn't film that either, which is too bad because now I remember that there was some trick there that I had to figure out myself. 
but now I don't remember what trick. I know that I made a special tool for that, and I know where the special tool is. I just don't know how to use it, but <laughs> anyway. So, the master cylinder is out. Hoping that the booster is in a good shape because these, I don't know, I don't think they are rebuildable. It looks like it's in a good shape. Anyway, we're gonna put it away for now. Let's take the reservoir off. There's four screws here. One of the screws is missing the lock washer, which tells me that this has been a part before. Now here, there's some O-rings, not really O-rings, but seals. Okay, so this is where I was, where I made the special tool for. So I hope that these seals are coming with the kit. We'll see. Okay, so here, as you know, there are two circuits. So this reservoir is divided in two separate compartments. Ah! This is the front, this is the rear brakes. And uh, of course they have two separate holes here at the bottom that feed two separate compartments of the master cylinder. So all the galleries inside where the brake fluid travels through, they are totally independent, the front and the rear ones. And the front have more capacity because always the front brakes participate a lot more in the stopping of the vehicle than the back because as the vehicle goes this way and it stops always the front goes down the rear goes up right so your front brakes are always stronger than the rear brakes that's why we have a bigger compartment for the front brakes and smaller compartment for the rear brakes so they have the same shaft inside the same plunger i don't know what should i call it that's operated by the same rod here that comes out of the booster and they have two different seals here inside that push brake fluid through either this hole or this hole. So what happens basically is the seal inside that travels back and forth for the front brakes, let's say, it sits somewhere here and brake fluid goes through here, goes down and fills up a compartment here. When you press the pedal, that pushes the seal this way and this fluid inside gets compressed and pushed out through this hole. Same here fluid goes through this hole, fills up a compartment somewhere here, the seal is sitting somewhere here, when you press the pedal, that same shaft that goes back and forth, that pushes the seal this way, and the seal pushes all the fluid from the cylinder inside out through this hole. So we, what we have to do is take out all the parts inside and replace the two seals to make sure that they are new, and also to inspect the bore inside and everything. So everything comes out that way. Now this still moves, which is good. Sometimes if they sit for a long time, they're seized. But to take out everything, we need to remove this valve and that's gonna let go. That's gonna let everything go out this way. And this is where I remember I made this special tool. So I'm gonna put this on the vise. And the special tool is very special. <laughs> it's a half inch hex key, allen key, or whatever you want to call it, and I drilled a hole here to allow for the valve, otherwise it was just just sitting on top, but when I drilled the hole, now I can drop this a little bit more and undo this, which I don't remember if it was, I think, was it a reverse thread? No. No, I don't remember. Get some brute force to it. Okay. So now we have to hold everything so it doesn't fly. So this plunger here, you see how it moves because it falls into a groove on the shaft. So we need to push a little bit to make sure that this is loose and then we can pull it out. And now if we let go of everything, it should come out, you see? So this is where this was falling and it wasn't allowing it to come out. And this is our seal here. See this seal we need to replace. This is what pushes the brake fluid 
in that direction. Another reason why we are taking it apart also is because we're going to use a dot five brake fluid, so we want to make sure that there's no dot three remaining inside. We're going to clean it nicely. So now the other part for the rear brakes not coming out. So now here there's a trick. We're going to blow air into this hole. So I'm not sure if it is going to come out of here, but I'm going to keep my hand there because it's going to fly. Oof. Right in your face. <laughs> okay, how do we do that? Okay, I'm going to put my knee here and my thumb here. Oh, that hurt. Oh, seriously, that hurt. Okay, but it came out. So this is the other seal and a spring at the end. That's, oh, now well, there's particles inside. Good thing we are taking it apart because all these particles are ruining the seal, the seals. Okay, so let me see first of all if we have these seals inside the kit so we can take them out and then clean the whole thing because I see rust inside here. I don't know what's inside there. Yeah, I feel like sand. We want to make sure that everything is nice and clean. So let's see what's in the kit first. Okay, I don't know which one is which. One is for the brake master, one is for the clutch master. And this one is for the clutch master and the smaller one <laughs> is for the brake master oh no this is for the clutch okay okay so these apparently are for clutch master and clutch slave cylinders so doesn't work for us <laughs> apparently uh, so we, what we're going to do is we're going to order a kit to rebuild this uh, master cylinder. So unfortunately we can't do it now, but at least you can see how it worked. <laughs> I'm just going to put it back together. I'm not even going to clean it now because we're going to have to take it apart again. So that's how it goes together. <laughs> we put it like this. Then we put our valve here. And we tighten this. Nice and simple. Okay, so these apparently are for Clutch Master and Clutch Slave. Repair kit SCs for slave cylinder, obviously. And repair kit for master cylinder MC. Okay, but this one says for 0.70 or 700 tau bore. Because there's 700 and 750. So let me check if it says it anywhere, yep, it says right here, 0.7. So this is the correct one. So let's take this line apart. Is there anything in it? Let's see if there's anything, we're gonna go drain it. Wow. Oh, okay. Wow, that was tight. And yeah, there's nothing in it. We're also gonna use dot five for the clutch. So we have to clean everything to dry. So here it's kind of the same thing. So take out the rubber from here. And here underneath, let me bring you closer. So here we have this circlip that we need to remove with pliers. And now this plunger. So if we push in hard and let go, it's gonna, it should come out. There's nothing to hold it in there now. It's just a... Nope. Okay, then we're gonna 
do the same thing. We're gonna put, I'm gonna put the cap on here and we're gonna blow air here. And there you go. So here, this is the seal that we want to replace, but first we wanna clean the bore inside. So I'm gonna take the whole thing apart and I'm gonna take it to the parts cleaner and I'm gonna literally wash it. Okay, so the body looks clean now. It is clean. And the bore inside, I, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see, but, but the bore looks pretty nice, nice and smooth. So, so this is ready to be assembled. So let's see now this plunger here and if we have all the parts needed. So this is what comes with the kit. And I'm a little bit puzzled around this uh, O-ring. I don't know what this O-ring is. I don't think we have any O-rings anywhere. <laughs> At least I don't remember. Let's take it apart and we will see. So how we're gonna take it apart is we're gonna have to decompress the spring and pull this tab out with something because right now it is locked. Okay. There you go. Oops, that came out. And how it goes in and out is like this. You just slide it to the side. So when it's centered, it's centered and it doesn't go anywhere because of the shape of this hole. But you slide it to the side and it comes out. Okay. So then we have this plastic retainer or whatever it is. We have this spring washer and this is where the other seal is. So one seal is here, the other one is here. So let's take this out. And this one from here. Okay, and I'm gonna just clean all that. Okay. Problem is, I was expecting to find grease here, special grease for parts that are in brake fluid, not even here. So that's not great. I wanted to lubricate the seals, but now I don't have that grease and I don't have dot five brake fluid. Well then, I'm gonna just use regular grease, but we're gonna use so little that nobody's gonna know. Just you and me, right? I don't think it's a big deal for a very small quantity. So first of all, let's get this seal there on this little piece. So I'm just gonna make my fingers a little bit greasy and just gonna go on the outside of this. Very, very little. And don't think it's gonna be a problem and we're gonna put it in, that's how it goes. Then we're gonna put our spring washer here, like that, then the retainer, and it, then the spring, and now we have to put the end of this into the hole and slide it towards the center, right? Like that. Okay. So this is assembled. Now let's change the seal here. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. This much grease. Just, I don't want it to stick to the wall. That's it and we put it with the open side that way. So that's, the, that's where the rod the, from the pedal pushes it and we want the open side to be like this so it grabs the fluid from the walls 
Okay. And now this, we can press in, and we have, we're going to have to make sure that this tab clicks. I'm just going to... Okay. Just needs to click in place, right? Oops. There you go, it clicked, but this came out. Okay. So to prevent this from happening, we can't press here. We have to pull on this side. <coughs> Come on. It clicked, but I just want to make sure that it is securely there. Okay, so you see it is inside. And now even if we want to, we can slide the stem to the side because it's locked by this piece. And that's it. So now we can assemble it. Okay. I'm going to pull this boot off somehow. It looks like a new cylinder anyway. And this new circlip looks worse than the old one. You know what? I'm going to use the old one. This one looks pretty cheap. Even though this kit comes from TRW, but I don't know what's with the o-ring. Anyway, so the circlip needs to go on this side of this washer. It is the washer that is getting held there. And then we're going to just snap it into the groove. I'm trying to work and show at the same time, you know? Okay. Hmm. Okay, it went into his groove, it's not coming out, and now we can put this boot, protect it from debris, you can do this. And now it goes over the cylinder. And this one is rebuilt. In some kits you also get the seal for here, for the cup. This kit doesn't have it. This is going to get dirty again, so we're going to clean it whenever the time comes. I always throw these cups away that come with cylinders and stuff, so which is stupid of me, so now I'm just going to put a piece of paper towel there and this one is ready to be installed on the car. And now let's deal with the slave. Not even going to take it out of the plate. Wow, well, this is harder than my hammer. <laughs> okay. One is actually in a pretty bad shape. Okay, here we have brake fluid, so so let me take also the bleeder off, and we're gonna go and drain it. Okay, so we drain this, but just looking at this bore here. doesn't look great does it and it looks like the piston or the plunger is pushed pretty deep down there hmm. but I can't even move it <coughs> doesn't move in any direction so <laughs> so I think it is all the way to the back I don't know let's see let's take everything out Let's see if, if this bore is going to be salvageable, because even if this part of the bore here, the one that's rusted, is not used, 
still we have to drag the seal through that part to get to the clean part so i don't know i don't know if this is salvageable let me let me try and clean it a little bit inside Let's try to take it out. Again, I, our only option here is with air. So I'm gonna put the bleeder back. Okay. Wow, that's pretty, pretty seized. <laughs> wow. I remember driving this car with this master cylinder with this slave cylinder so wow 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 let's give it a little love tap with the special tool <laughs> nope 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 i don't think it's salvageable how did it rust so badly I think for what it is, it's better to buy a new cylinder. They're not very expensive as far as I remember. Okay, try a little bit harder loft up. Oh, it actually moved. <laughs> it moves. actually coming back on its own with the spring oh. I need another hand to hold this thank you Came out. <laughs> However, I don't know where it is. <laughs> All right. So luckily, <laughs> I was filming that, so I was able to rewatch the video and make a small investigation. So I found this one pretty easy because this is the one that I heard in that direction, the one that flew over there, and I heard it make this sound. So I found this one there. This one and this one are the ones that hit there in the wall and came back and hit these cans in the back. And this one is the one that made this noise. And the only thing that makes this noise around is a box that's right behind you. So I found this by that box. But had I not watched the video, probably I wasn't gonna be able to find all the parts. Anyway, so everything is here and that's how it was. So that was at the bottom of the cylinder, the spring. And then this goes on the spring like that. That's the seal that goes like this. And then the piston or plunger or whatever it is that was pushing them all and compressing them. So that's great. However, the kit that we have is totally different. So I don't know if that's a new way of using the same cylinder with different internals, but we have again a spring and we have a piston.
and this seal I believe goes right there so that's it what goes in this groove I have no idea but they are the same diameter so I'm assuming they just want you to rebuild it in this way so that's how we're gonna rebuild it but first of all let me see if the bore is salvageable so after finding all these parts it turns out that we don't need them <laughs> I have a little honing tool the same as the one that we use for the cylinders in the engine I'm gonna try and find it now wow I bought that like probably seven eight years ago and never opened it never used it and surprisingly I was able to find it can it go that small though Oh shit. Oh yeah, actually fits. So we're gonna spray WD-40 inside and on the two. Okay. Let's see what's going on now. <laughs> hmm. That's actually not too bad. Can you see inside? I'm trying to get rid of the shade. I'm pretty happy with that. Anyway, there's looks like there's a little bit of peeling here at the end, but all the way down there at the bottom looks pretty clean. So again, what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna take out the bleeder again. I'm gonna go clean it perfectly and then we're gonna assemble it. All right, so this is nice and clean now and Again, too bad we don't have grease. I would have greased the walls, but I don't want to grease it with uh, multi-purpose grease. So we're just going to grease the seal a little bit and that's all. So it doesn't stick there. Hopefully soon we're going to fill it with dot uh, 5 brake fluid. So the spring obviously goes down with the wider part. And this part goes here. Okay. Don't lose it. This is gonna have to go. So this goes this way. So the open part of the seal is gonna be down towards the fluid. So let me put a little bit of grease here again. This is how much I'm introducing. I don't want to contaminate the brake fluid, the dot five, right? But we can't put it dry too because it's gonna sees there so oh. okay i was expecting more trouble than that so let's make sure that this sticks to the spring okay now we should be able to push it in yep. <laughs> doesn't return yeah the spring is not strong enough to return it so I'm gonna push it with air again and I'm gonna leave it at this end of the bore so it keeps it sealed inside. Anyway, we have to fill this up with fluid as soon as possible because I don't want the walls to start uh, flush rusting, you know what I mean? So we're gonna put the bleeder. So let me see, this is how it goes on the engine like this it gets mounted on the engine on the left side so this is the higher side so this is where the bleeder goes tighten it now we're gonna blow here just to push the piston back out oh, that's too strong okay i'm just gonna leave it here we're gonna put this 
boot oh come on now I'm sure this boot is for here why is it so tight okay that's super tight but it is what it is I can put a second bleeder here just to keep it but anyway I'm gonna put a piece of paper towel here too so hopefully that's gonna prevent any humidity from going in and this is ready to be installed as well um, we will see about this line if we're gonna be reusing it then we're gonna have to blow brake cleaner through it or at least air because we want it as, as clean as possible inside but maybe we're gonna make another one uh, i think john has a new one for here uh, i'm not really sure i'm getting confused now with all the projects but anyways we're gonna do that in another video because i already got my parts for the other car i don't know if you realize but it's the next day so i'm going back to my other project to finish it and then i'm gonna continue with our 70 and we'll see what we're gonna do next so even though we didn't oh, yeah hi from here <laughs> So even though we didn't have the kit for the brake master cylinder and we couldn't rebuild it completely, at least I believe that I gave you enough information about how to rebuild it. If you're not sure, stay tuned and in one of the next videos when we get the kit, we're gonna finish rebuilding it. But I believe that most of you know how to do it anyways and those of you who don't know how to do it and, you, and they are brave enough to do it, they have enough information to do it. Anyway, so that's going to be it for today, guys. Thanks for watching, commenting, subscribing, sharing, and supporting the channel. Thanks to all my Patreons. Thanks to all the people who donate parts or even send me money directly through PayPal. I really, really appreciate that. Thank you, guys. I'll see you soon. Bye.